Let's go to the big story of the day. Obviously, the comments from Marsha Langton that have now appeared first front page of the paper and then with my colleague Sh Sherry Markson, who was able to give us some vision of what she said. The news, of course, breaking that a co-architect of The Voice, Professor Marsha Langton, accused no voters of opposing the referendum because of base racism or sheer stupidity during a speech she gave in Bunbury. Warren Mundine, I'll bring you in. Uh, you know this issue better than anyone. Uh, according to the, the test of uh, Marsha Langton, are you a racist or are you stupid for opposing <laughs> the Prime Minister's voice? <laughs> I'm sure some people uh, would say something about me being stupid, but it being racist and that. This, look, it just shows how, to, how, how this whole campaign of the Yes uh, campaign has been totally out of touch with the Australian people. Uh, that they, they've, they've come out getting all these corporates involved, all the archbishops, all these religious uh, heads and that, and they've got you know all the sporting bodies and everything like that, and they just look down their nose at you, and uh, and they just think that you know that ordinary Australians out there, people like you and me and other people, uh, that we're some sort of cretins and we're just this horrible, horrible people, a bunch of racists, the country's racist, and that, and that's what they think about us. And so uh, you know, I was wasn't surprised by her comments today. It's. Uh, typical of what she's been saying and also Noel Pearson was saying up until recently, uh, all through this campaign. <laughs> I think what shocked a lot of Australians, Warren, is, is how vitriolic the attacks have been uh, by these Aboriginal elites, uh, particularly against people like you, you and Jacinta Price. Were you, were you surprised that this was coming your way? Uh, I was surprised not coming from that group of people. I was very surprised uh, about, you know, how widespread it was in the Yes campaign. The Yes campaign people are always talking about niceties and we're nice people and uh, we're anti-racist. You know, the number of times I've been abused by a hashtag anti-racist with that racist terms is unbelievable. You know, look, look this is why the Australian people, they're not mugs. They're seeing this uh, campaign for what it is, it is an elite campaign. It is about people from the inner city areas. It's about these people who look down on the western suburbs of Melbourne and Sydney in the, in the bush. And they think that they're the font of all knowledge and that when they talk, we all should just bow down and that. And when we didn't, uh, and, and, uh, that, that's, and we actually looked at what they're trying to design, you know. I got some articles coming up mm. so, soon on that document 14, which is that document that looks at uh, how, the, uh, how the voice is going to be implemented and all this rep reparations and all that. You've done a great job on that, highlighting those pages after the, the covering page. And it's... Uh, you know, it's horrifying. You know, I nearly fell off my chair when I when I sat down with my researchers and that and went through it. Mm. I guess the challenge for the no camp is, given that the, the yes vote's tanking, is that Australians still turn out and vote because it's not over until no, this over. thing's defeated and that the no camp doesn't get complacent. Oh, no, look, 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 me, in my mind, I'm not uh, paying it... Uh, uh, look, uh, that's not true. I do pay attention to the poll. But in my mind and how I operate is it's 50-50. And that's how it is. And I know... And this is how crazy the Yes campaign is. I know that a lot of people would like to vote Yes because they want to see practical outcomes for Aboriginal people and they want to see that there is a, uh, you know, Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islanders are recognised in the Constitution as the first people. But the problem they're having, they, they won't tell anyone what it is and that, then they, you know, one day they, 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 they're supporting treaty and the next day they're not supporting treaty. They're all over the shot about this. It's been a dreadful campaign by the, by the Yes campaign. But the worst thing of all, this, this voice... This voice has to be defeated mm. and we have to crush it. Can I ask you about this story today about mob ticks? I mean, these are all these cultural organisations like the opera, like the symphony, of course, majority taxpayer supported, uh, giving different ticket prices based on your race. Not, not the fact that you can or can't pay or that you might be from a, a regional town, white or black, you know, going to the opera in Sydney is pretty expensive when you factor in getting there and a hotel room, 
but just by ticking a box and saying you're Aboriginal, not having to prove anything, you're going to get a different price to someone who turns up, you know, at the box office and pays the sort of tote odds. What do you think about that? I wish I knew about this earlier. I went to the opera a couple of months ago and I had to pay the full price. Uh, look, it, oh, it's... Oh, there you go. <laughs> now, now I can take my whole family. It'd be great. No, but seriously, you know, I understand that if you're really trying to get the opera and the ballet and all the, and the, and the chamber orchestra and that to ha have the opportunity for people who are struggling out there, you know, some Indigenous people, but other people too from, uh, from struggling families, this is not the way to do it. Uh, you know, I could turn up there uh, to the next uh, uh, ballet and, and, and pay $25 or whatever it is and I could get all my family and all my 10 kids and, and kids and that, that'll add up to the price that I, I would have paid last time. That's not the way to do it. The way to do it is if you're going to encourage uh, people that they don't get to uh, previously, then go out and, and, and do that. Go out and meet with those people who can't afford to go to the opera or the ballet or whatever. And, and that's how they should do it. They shouldn't just have carte blanche. You know, uh, you, know you could probably turn up, Peter, because they're not going to check, check, check your credentials. No, no, but, but it just sends a signal that, that if you are Indigenous, uh, you don't have a good job or you, you haven't learned to trade or gone to university, you know, that you deserve to have uh, subsidised ticketing. I think that's, that's the thing that I would find... Uh, offensive. It's like women being told we only get a seat in Parliament uh, if there are quotas. Well, oh, I, yes. I just think putting us all in one job lot is, is dangerous. And it is, it is. Uh, look, we're, they're treating us like a homogeneous group and this is this is the problem with the voice. You know, if, if they were really about closing the gaps and they'd be looking at things like accountability, you know, they were spending billions of dollars, why aren't we getting outcomes? You know, what's wrong with these people who are running these programs? Why aren't they getting the outcomes and spending billions of dollars of Australian tax money? Uh, education and economic participation and so jobs and investment and businesses and, mm. and the social ch change we have to do in regard to the crime rates and so on in these communities. Don't treat us all the same. People like myself, Marcia Langton and, 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 and Noel Pearson and, and Megan Davis and all those people, we don't need that help. You know, we're, we're doing great just like other Australians are. But we need to look at the people who are struggling, who are, who are in need, and work with them. And they're not only Aboriginal people, there's a lot of people out there in regional and remote Australia uh, who are struggling out there, and that's who we need to focus on. You're a voice of common sense. I don't reckon anyone listening to you tonight would say you were stupid or racist. <laughs> Sorry, Marsha Langton, you've got that one wrong. Warren Mundine, thank you as always.